Cousins, Anthony Jones here with Brigade Boats coming back at you with another build. In this video, we're going to take this 17 foot Alumacraft Bandit and turn it from stripped and bare to fully decked and rare. Stick around and I'm going to show you guys the entire build process of this project in this video. In this video, I'll show you how I completed a modern restoration on a 40 year old 17 foot aluminum bass boat. I'll show you what I did and how I did it in the order I did it in. There's also a full parts list that I left down in the video description if you're interested in all the parts I used throughout this build. For any purchases made on tbnation.net, don't forget to use that code BRIGADE at checkout and save 5% off your entire order. Also, don't forget to stick around to the end of the video to see the customer's reaction when he picks up his newly restored rig. Hey guys, Six Sense Fishing just elevated their soft plastic game with the all new 9.6 Busa Ribbon Tail Worm. The Busa is Six Sense Fishing's modern approach to an old school worm, featuring alternating ribs that lock in that good scent and a ring Busa tail that creates an incredible secondary action, whether on the fall or at a dead stop. Available in show stopping colors that you'd expect from Six Sense. Get yours at SixSenseFishing.com and use the code BRIGADE at checkout and save 10% off your entire order. Project Boat is a 1983 Alumacraft Bandit. This is a 17-foot aluminum bass boat that the customer had previously gutted. The goal of this build was to give the boat a modern restoration, building it clean and mean and fully functional for bass tournament fishing. The customer aims to use this boat for electric-only tournament fishing, but has the option to mount a big gas outboard and gas tank if needed. The scope of work for the interior would include custom tube framing, aluminum lids and decking, a rod locker, a tournament live well, a cooler, plenty of storage, full electronics, and hydro turf throughout. The exterior will get no love and be left as is besides some cleaning. This project is special to me for two reasons. Number one, it's my first boat build to feature an all welded 1 16th aluminum tube frame welded by me. I purchased a MIG welder and have been working hard to learn how to weld aluminum. I'm self-taught with a ton more to learn, but I'm excited about the possibilities that welding will bring to my future projects. Number two, this is the first boat build that I have in-house hired help. Hey guys, this is Chris. Chris, say hi. Say hey world. Hey everybody. Hey, hey YouTube. Hey cousins. Chris stops by a few days a week to put some hours in and at the time of this video edit is still a part of the Brigade Boat Company and I'm proud to have him. Let's get into the build. We started by taking the boat off the trailer. The customer asked that we replace the old trailer bunks. So Chris started removing the old ones and I began working on my budget friendly waterproof bunks. The process of how I make these bunks is a bit much to explain here, but there is a full step-by-step -step video on my channel with almost 100,000 views. So it seems people are finding the video of use. Feel free to check it out. With the new bunks finished, we got them mounted on the trailer with new hardware. The boat had holes from the previous live well setup that would be of no use to me. This was right before I bought the welder, so I did a non-weld patch, backing the hole with 090 sheet aluminum sandwiched with 3M5200 attached with countersink rivets. Once cured, these holes will be patched with fiberglass reinforced filler, then sanded smooth and hit with primer. Chris began sanding, grinding, cleaning, and prepping some of the interior portions of the boat that would eventually get final paint. I got the boat loaded back on the trailer and worked on giving the exterior a good scrub with aluminum hull cleaner to brighten up that 40-year-old hull. We continued cleaning and gutting more unnecessary parts.
I think Chris had an absolute blast digging out 40-year-old foam that was stuck behind welded in side panels. Speaking of which, I decided to cut out the side panel to give us access to run wiring later in the build, as well as the steering cable. The boat made its way to the Cover Pro Portable Garage, and we began working on the floor system. We started with one-inch closed-cell foam pink board, and then to flush perfectly to the rib height, we added a second layer of quarter-inch foam insulation board. The foam serves two purposes. Number one, it adds flotation in the event of taking on water. Number two, it serves as a solid filler to fill the void between the ribs to put sheet aluminum over to prevent any flexing, which is why it's very important to get the height of the foam perfectly flush with the top of the ribs. To shed some weight, I did something a little different on the aluminum floor in this boat. We ran 090 sheet aluminum for the cockpit floor section. For the sheeting that would go underneath the front deck framing, I ran 060 sheet aluminum. We also got the transom area cleaned up and foamed as well as the area underneath the jump seats. I removed the bow eye and old wood back and replaced it with quarter inch plate and resealed in 5200. Then I began trimming away excess aluminum in the rear of the boat to make way for the live well and live well plumbing. I cleaned up more sheet aluminum in the rear and welded in the first piece of aluminum tube for the rear deck. We continued work on the jump seat area and I turned my attention to framing in the back deck adding the flooring and doing all the fabrication work to prepare for the live well and plumbing. It was now time to do the live well. I began prepping the aluminum live well tub I received from tbnation.net. I shaved a bit off the top and then I drilled a pump in and overflow holes. Meanwhile, in the back deck area, everything was taped off and sprayed matte gray. You may have noticed a few shots back that all of the aluminum work in this area was sanded first, then it was cleaned before paint, ensuring that all the paint work sticks and doesn't flake off. As usual for my builds, I'm using all flow right parts for the live well plumbing. What you see here is the Flowrite Premium Kit available on tbnation.net. The guys at TB Nation did all the legwork to put this kit together, so all you do is open the box and have every part necessary to make your live oil dreams a reality. I put the live oil overflow through hole fitting in place. Note that I used 5200 on all the through hole fittings in this build. Then I ran two inches of closed cell insulation board under and on the front and backs of where the live oil will go. Then I drop in the live oil tank with the drain plumbing pre-attached. From there, I permanently mate the live well to the framing using rivets. You can see here the foam insulation tightly surrounding the live well. I installed the overflow and then the Flowrite aerator pump out combo nozzle on the live oil tank. More 5200 ensuring a watertight seal. I began mocking up the pump location and installed the rear through hole fitting. Before I could run all the live oil lines, I needed to turf that back area first. I'm using HydroTurf brand EVA foam sheet material. Everything in this boat will be custom measured and hand cut. The color I'm using here in the hatch area will be the same color that would eventually go on the decking. I can now run the live well fill and drain lines to the live well pump over the finished flooring. Bouncing back to the jump seat area, I did some sheet aluminum work inside the storage compartments. I also cut the holes for where the fuse box and the wiring would eventually go. I reinforced the framework around the jump seat area and then firmed the openings around the perimeters with 090 sheet aluminum to accommodate the new jump seat lid sizes we would mount in place. Chris got to work on the console, removing the steering components and scraping off the factory decals. 
I began running hydro turf in the bottom floor of the jump seat storage area. And then Chris began wiring in the back deck area. After building enough of these boats, it's now my standard practice to do all of the finished work possible underneath the framing before I mount decking and lids. Now you can see the final product of the installed Flowrite Premium Livewell Kit. You've got the pump and valve in the back mounted to the transom brace with a custom spacer. I've got the larger diameter overflow running downhill on one side of the live well. The live well tank itself is mounted with a stamped bottom which runs downhill to the center drain. There's the live well pump out and fill combo on the other side with the live well drain and fill hoses running in parallel together off to the sidewall heading to the back of the boat meeting up with the live well pump. All in all, really clean setup with plenty of storage, which is exactly what I was after. We cut relief joints in the factory side panel to eliminate bubbling. Then it was time to start the front deck framing. This process takes great consideration. I have to think about deck length, hatch sizes and locations, layout, frame it square, and planing without humps or bumps. Things need to be centered and symmetrical or mistakes will show in the lined EVA foam later, given that it runs off of center. You get the idea, there's just a lot to think about, but this is the part where the creation really comes to life. Chris got the bilge pump mounted and wired in super clean and tidy, and then we began work on the front deck details. We started cutting sheet aluminum for the vertical walls and the rod locker. There were some awkward shapes that were necessary to template for an exact fit. All the interior hatch walls were done in 060 sheet aluminum to save weight, and countersink rivets were used to attach to the 1x2 116th tube framing. Parts that would be painted were pre-sanded before installation. Whoa, 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 whoa! Hey, no, for real, what do you think? 
We turned our attention to the custom cooler and the front deck. Here, we would also utilize Flowrite plumbing parts for the cooler drain. The cooler bottom had a recessed stamp for the drain fitting. It would drain melted ice downhill and out the side of the boat through a through hole fitting and prevent water from coming back in with a drain plug inside the cooler. And this cooler fit incredibly tight. I don't think I could have made the framework any tighter and still get the cooler into place. From there, the cooler was riveted in place permanently. We added as much closed cell foam insulation board as possible around the cooler. You can also see the PVC pipe I installed to route wiring behind the cooler into the steering console. Here you can see me using an angle finder tool to help me transfer over the dimensions of an odd shaped panel to cover the cooler. I wrapped the cooler in sheet aluminum and did the same for the cockpit vertical wall. Chris did more work on the console, notching it and cutting holes for future wiring. We overlapped and extended the cockpit side panels with more sheet to create a better angle and flush out with the floor. Here you can see some of the sheet aluminum work done within the hatches and on the front deck vertical wall leading into the cockpit. The factory hull and all the interior deck vertical walls got the same gray paint treatment as within the back deck. From there, we began roughing in wiring leads for future accessories and wiring in all of the LED light strips within the hatches. Each hatch, including the rod locker, would get ample lighting from these strips with all the wiring hidden underneath the framing and going back to the fuse box location. What do you think about your YouTube debut? My YouTube debut, huh? You're gonna be a YouTube star. What do you think? Let there be light. There was yet even more wiring to do. We added deck lights along the gunnels and continued wiring lights and accessory leads underneath the front deck framing to the console area. It was HydroTurf time. Again, the material on the floors within the hatches and under the deck was the same material we would eventually use on top of the decks. All of these pieces were hand measured and cut as accurately as possible for a jam up jelly tight fitment. If you've been around the channel for a while, then you already know I take great pride in the details that aren't regularly seen. If you're new to the channel, welcome. This is how I like the inside of my hatches, as clean and precise as possible. With the turf in, almost everything underneath the decks was now complete. Let's do a quick recap. All new subfloor, custom welded 1 16th aluminum tube framework featuring a tournament grade live well setup, a custom cooler, rod locker, and additional storage hatches. We did paint work, turf work, and all new lighting, accessories, and pre-wiring. The old bandit is really starting to take shape at this point with the hardest part out of the way and we are over the hump on the build. Up front, I got creative with the navigation lights. There was a factory rubber bumper inset into this aluminum channel that had been long gone. I was able to fit some flashlight red and green high output waterproof LED light strips within the channel to act as the nav lights. The original wood backing on the console was toast, so I traced out the shape and made a new one. Chris and I got ready to install the steering cable for the console. Send it? I guess, let her rip, tater chip. It was a total pain, but we were able to fish the steering cable through the transom tray, down into the back hatch, then into and behind the side panel, and back out of the side panel where the steering console would mount. Doing this kept everything super clean and the steering cable remains hidden. And I forgot to mention until now, the customer dropped this boat off without an outboard. He tournament fishes out of another boat and was going to possibly use that outboard or go a different direction entirely after he gets the boat back from me. Long story short, you're not going to see us mount up an outboard in this video, but we did have to get the steering cable in regardless. I patched some cutouts on the bow and pre-drilled my holes for LED lights to later be installed after HydroTurf. I then turned my attention to the rod locker and templated out the odd shape of the rod locker wall. I transferred the template to the turf, then cut out the turf and installed it. For the vertical walls and the rod locker, I used black hydro turf. You'd see the contrasting theme again later on in the build. I do the rod locker walls and turf to give the extra protection for rods and reels. I welded some framing inside of the live well for the live well lid, and then I mocked up the back deck lid center of the deck. These lids are made by my good friend Nate from Nate's Custom Boats and Tiny Boat Nation Outdoors. As you can see, they are fabricated with the utmost quality and powder coated with a pristine finish. You can also get these same lids at tinyboatnation.net.
I templated out the back deck panels, then transferred the template to my 090 sheet aluminum sheeting, and then I cut out the shapes of the decking. Before installing the decking, I need to run some silicone around the perimeter of the live well. This unique design of mine uses the underside of the decking as the live well splash guard with a small center live well lid. To prevent the water from seeping out of the live well and in between the framing and decking, I need to seal between the framing and decking. This ensures that the water stays where it should and doesn't find its way to places that it shouldn't be, keeping everything nice and dry. With silicone now in place, I began mounting the back decking. I'm using plenty of 316 inch countersink rivets to tab the decking in to the framing underneath. With the decking now in place, I began permanently mounting up the aluminum lids. And this pretty much wraps up the fabrication for the back deck. I cut holes and wired in leads for the cockpit lights to be installed after hydro turf. The bench area was starting to look really good. You can also see here where all the leads were wired into the console area. The bench area would also get brand new powder coated lids and new bass boat seats made by Deckmate. I use them for mock up for now as these would also have to be installed after the hydro turf goes down on the bench top. Because the new lids and seats sat a little higher than the factory ones and the new aluminum cockpit floor is much thinner than the original factory plywood, I had to make an adjustment to the console to get the correct height. I cut the flange in the bottom and added one by one inch square tube to the console base. I also made adjustments to the notches in the side for the steering cable and wiring clearance. Now between new lids, seats, floor, and front deck, I was able to mock up the console for a perfect height. The console front angle lands perfectly on the deck height. This is a detail that's never seen in the final product, nor would you ever know that this took place without this video, but it was a lot of work on my end to ensure everything lined up. It was time to do even more work to the console. I needed to make room for the new switch panel and live well variable timer and pump control. I cut out a new space for the switch panel. I then precisely cut a patch to cover an existing cutout on the console. I welded the patch in place and then grinded and sanded it smooth. I also patched up an old cigarette lighter hole like it was never there. With the patchwork done on the console, I can now cut out a space for the live well control. And so it was done. But that was only half the battle. I now had to make all the same cutouts on the new wood backing that I'd earlier made. So I traced everything over and then I cut that out. I then took the wood panel and coated it generously in fiberglass resin to make it water resistant. Beauty can be only skin deep, and while my boats always look great on the surface when finished, this is the time and effort and quality underneath the final product that can never be seen or acknowledged in a single build photo on Instagram. With all the labor hours into the build so far, I began resenting the boat, and I gave it a name change, and then I took a snack break. I added sheet aluminum top to the bench, and you could see accessory leads coming into the future fuse box location. A little note on my decking, I leave an overhang by design so I can butt my vertical turf flush to it. This prevents edge wear on the hydro turf. Just another hidden detail. I mounted up the cable switch for the live well pump and then began permanently mounting lids and decking.
it was time to mount the strut to the rod locker lid. To make this work, I would need to make a custom bracket to mount to the hatch lid track. Then it was a game of mathematics to get the strut and the lid angle exactly how I wanted. On this boat, we tried a vertical lid opening with a 45 degree corner cutout to allow a bit more depth into the cockpit for longer fishing rods. I think this turned out pretty sweet. I installed the drain tubes for all the front deck hatches. The anti-flood tracks direct water to these tubes and the tubes direct water under the subfloor to the hole channels and to the back of the boat where the bilge pump is. I moved on to gator skinning the bow. I've used this material on past builds and I really like this stuff. It's an anti-skid but much tougher than EVA foam. It's perfect for areas that will take abuse like the bow of the boat. This material is cut to fit, so I did some layout and measuring and got it on the bow and the transom caps. The rear pole light was mounted and it was time to do some electrical. In this project, I'm using Anchor Marine Marine Gray wire and components from TB Nation's new electronics parts line, their battery shut off and fuse box in particular. Power to all accessories in the boat are fed through 8 gauge wire and a battery shut off switch, tying into a 12 pin fuse box slash negative bus bar. I put the components out of the way, but accessible underneath the driver's jump seat. Here you can see the back hatch area where I hooked up the electronics to a powerhouse lithium battery. This is my personal battery and it's in this boat just for testing and filming purposes. The customer will provide his own batteries and fish finders after pickup and install himself. I got all the negatives tied into the fuse box and all the positive accessory leads ran to the console area. Then all of the positives tied into the fuse box fused accordingly to the accessory specs. For my customer's convenience, I labeled the fuse box cover. If you're interested in how to wire your own boat, I strongly encourage you to check out my full in-depth wiring guide here on the channel. The time had come to reunite the console with the boat. I mounted it in place using plenty of rivets and self-tapping screws. Now I could get started on some console details. I started by wrapping the console face in carbon fiber vinyl. Thank you to Carrie at 400 Inc. for supplying the vinyl on this project. Here you can see the resin coated wood backing before and then after a gentle sanding. I knocked down all the imperfections to ensure a tight fit. Then it was a means of bolting up the steering column. Everything ended up fitting really snug and definitely mo better. Next, I wired up the switch panel. One thing I did was use different color wire for each accessory lead. This eliminates confusion for me or anyone else later down the road. I got the switch panel wired in and mounted up, and then I wired and mounted the Flowrite Live Oil Timer slash pump control. After that, I decided to squeeze in a small voltmeter and dual USB port, which reads volts on the accessory battery and offers charging capabilities. We were almost ready to do the EVA foam decking, but not so fast. The last thing I would need to do is seal all the edges of the decking with silicone. We worked really hard up until this point on the boat, and a lot of money was spent on the lids with the anti-flood tracks. I hate to see our work or that money go to waste by skipping the step of sealing all the deck edges. I know a boat is not a submarine, but we also don't want water to get the storage areas that we designed to stay dry. So the first thing I do is cut all my aluminum decking as tight to the edges as I can get it. Second, I seal all of those edges to help keep water from where we don't want it to go. Next up, HydroTurf time. HydroTurf is the name brand, EVA foam is the material. This foam is closed cell and water resistant, dissipates heat and stays cool, is an anti-skid and much, much more. I'm going to breeze through the foam install in this video and reason being is I filmed a full foam guide video with everything you need to know about this product and it's here on the channel. It has an in-depth look at how I install it. There's a lot to this portion of the project, simply too much to cover here in a full build video. So check that foam video out if you want to learn more. For the boat decks, I'm using the light gray brushed HydroTurf with baby blue routered lines. It's the same material I used earlier in the video within the hatches. The key here is to get everything center and symmetrical. But even with that, it started earlier in the build in the framing and decking stage because here at the turf install, any imperfections will show if a hatch is off. You can't move the turf lines. I use templates where necessary and work my way through the boat one section at a time, hand cutting everything, doing my best to keep the turf straight and true and centered and seamless. It's a slow methodical process, but yet another juncture within the project that the boat really comes to life. I got the front deck, back deck, and then the cockpit floor all finished up in the gray hydro turf. That was only half the battle though, as this boat would get a 100% full hydro turf interior. Time for the contrasting color, black. Again here, I used the templating method to get the odd shapes cut accurately and with a tight fitment. 
The black would run through the cockpit vertical walls, the bench seat, up the side panels, and down the gunnels from front to back. I did this similar styling on a previous build here on the channel. And while more labor hours and material, the contrast really makes the boat decks pop and gives the overall design more depth. With the turf on and the bow gator skin, the boat would now get a Minn Kota Ultrex and Chris would be the man for the install. Meanwhile, I would install the bench top jump seat lids. I'd have to remove and reverse the hinge location. I'd also pre-paint all the new rivets for a clean look. Then rivet down the hinges and then finally attach the lids to the hinges. From there, I'd bolt up the new bass boat seats with all new hardware and collar done. I swapped out the turf top on the TB Nation Outdoors center console and then I installed it between those new seats. I even turfed the inside to match. Next, I had a bow access cover that would need to be trimmed due to the new deck height. I trimmed it, drilled new mounting holes, and then I added an access hole for the graph wiring and then left another hidden note. Then I wrapped it in more carbon fiber vinyl before reinstalling it on the bow of the boat. Next, I worked on the drain for the recessed foot pedal tray. I like to cut grooves in the through hole fitting with my rotary tool to ensure that there's no standing water on the fitting's lip when installed. I then mounted up in the tray with silicone and used Flowrite quick lock parts and hose to direct the water to the center channel of the boat. I can then permanently mount the recessed tray and the trolling motor foot pedal. With the foot pedal and recessed tray securely mounted up, I then mounted the remote throttle for the Torquedo electric outboard that the customer currently had on his other tournament boat. I also mounted up the Minn Kota GPS puck for the trolling motor, as well as the Flowrite remote valve control. This mechanism is cable operated and allows you to open the live well pump valve from recirculate to auto to empty right from the cockpit. Pretty cool. Remember the access I cut out in the side panel at the very beginning of the video to fish wires through? Time to finally cover it back up with a custom panel I made. Next, adding a floor drain dead center of the cockpit floor. I actually recessed this drain flush into the hydro turf. Next up on the punch list, I installed all the flush T-handle locking latches inside of the hatch lids. Then I added rubber edging on said lids. This helps soften slamming lids, protect the powder coated track, and forms a tight seal. And although the customer decided to go back with the old factory steering wheel, I decided to show the center cap a bit of loving to tie things together nicely. Around the nav lights up front, I dressed things up with some gator skin and black hydro turf. At this point, there was only one thing left to do, final decals. This boat would stay clean and mean with one main decal on the steering console. Of course, my buddy Kerry at 400 Inc. brought this design to life. It was only right we paid homage to the original boat name, but this time around, 40 years later, I now present to you the Brigade Bandit. What up, cuz? Hey, buddy, how are you? <laughs> 
Long time no see. I How know. you been? You, you catch him today? No. No? Not, not at, at all? all? Oh, man, you need no. a new boat. That's why. I know. I need a new partner, too, and a new boat. <laughs> <laughs> Here, pick you a hat. See. One color. So do you want hatches open on the unveil, or would you like the hatches closed? I'll, we, take, them, I'll take them open. Open. Okay. Open. They're already open. All right. Man. Wow. The bandit, baby. You brought it back. That's what I wanted on it, too. God, that is sick. Wow. <laughs> Sheesh. Dude, this is insane. Numero uno on DIY Cousin Willie. Dude, for, thanks, brother, yeah, man. man. Dude. Oh my gosh, I'm like speechless. <laughs> Dude, this is... This is insane. My kids are going to love this. I know that. So they'll be driving. I'll be fishing. <laughs> All right, man. What do you think? Dude, this is killer, man. You did everything you said you were going to do and more. I couldn't be happier with it. Um, if you guys need your boat done, give Anthony a call and he'll hook you up. Actually, actually, don't call me. <laughs> there he is. Hey, man. Hey. Hey. What an incredible job. Thank I mean, you. My goodness. Appreciate I'm so, it. I'm so so glad that Tanner got you to do his boat and it was worth the wait, man. I mean, it just all looks so clean and so exact. And I mean, there's not one detail that's not been, you know, taken care of. I mean, I, it's impressive. One last thing before you leave you got to take off the sticker. All right, buddy, not the Illuma crap anymore. Well, off to the next one, cousins. I'm here at Brigade Boats with my man Anthony Jones. He about to get this Greg Street project crazy. Mm -hmm.